Hi, Don here. Um, today is uh, Tuesday, the 27th of July, 2016. I'm just catching up on um, the latest of uh, our developments uh, with Kingi Taro in the um, Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, uh, connection to 77 Cook Street, recovery of that property. Um, I'm back on to that shortly to call my barrister to see what's going on. I'm going to try and ring him now and uh, I haven't heard from him for a while now so this is what I'll do. I'll call him. Think I'm thinking about it. Yeah, hi, uh, Shannon. John Wanawa here. I've just come back from the East Coast. We've got some uh, tidal energy projects starting there on my land block at uh, Port Awanui, Rotoria, on the beach. Uh, so I want to find out now what's, how we're going with uh, my court case and uh, uh, Detective Natalie Flowerdew Brown. It's been a while now. So I need to catch up with you and uh, um, let me know what's going on. I want to get that sorted right now uh, because I want to get moving soon um, with things. Uh, and I don't want that. Um, I've got to prepare to go to London. And uh, um, uh, the chief up north, uh, Kingi Todua, is uh, telling me to get on with it. Uh, with Cook Street because um, he uh, wants to get on with these land blocks as well and uh, uh, get things going with my marae at uh, Port Awanui there. We're setting up there a direct line to um, Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court, from my marae up the road from where we're operating on the land block. Okay, so we're putting our authority inside that marae right now, having a meeting there soon with the council in Gisborne, Gisborne District Council, we've got a few things from them, and Te Tumutumu Paeroa uh, Trust, the old Maori Trust, I've been working with them as well at the meetings we had with my, my family. Okay, so give me a call, I'll give you a text and we'll go from there. I don't want to wait too long now because things are starting to move ahead faster. Okay, bye. There, that's my barrister. I'm quite concerned about how long it's taking um, for him to contact me, and I need to know um, what's really going on with the police holding me up. That's very serious. It's very serious. All the things that I've got on John Key's page on my uh, website, one of 68 websites, well, I think it's 69 now. I've got two sites for John Key alone there, with all the offences added up, stacked up against him and his administration of this country running off the rails. Now, Simon Bridges has just got caught again, and I just posted it on that one of those websites, or both of them. Every time something goes wrong inside his government, I stick it on there for the court case. These are all evidence of mismanagement and misappropriation of funds. That's what's gone on with the money that's gone missing in the transport department and all those people getting licenses without going through the proper channels. And now it's rampant in his government. And all that they've been doing all these years is still the same why, the reason why I'm going this way on our own. Run our country better than he is. 
tell you that much. We're going back to the old Britain and Brexit and getting our own self government together with this flag and our own economy so that we get something better out of what we're getting now. Just wrecked lands. The lands that I looked at is wrecked uh, with erosion and the Runanga. Don't get the bill too. For what I've seen of the erosion of our lands, the rivers, it's just washed the whole lot away because of them pine trees and taking all our big logs out. Now we've got the logs, uh, the Kari logs, um, being held up in South Island or up north um, and because of the skullduggery going on inside this government and those people um, pulling those logs out. Okay, The native trees are getting a hammer. And we want to try and preserve our country and the seabeds uh, in its pristine state, put it back how they found it and then boot them. But we want to build them for what they have done wrong and all their agents, all the elite people that have contributed to the devastation or the, the degradation of our country. Right? All those people who got the money out of it and left it in a mess. We're going to fix it and build it. Right, that's what I'm going to say at our meeting. We're going to fix the problem, Kingi, and build. Okay, that's what I want to do. And I think you'll agree with me and the rest of New Zealand, the citizens of New Zealand will agree with me that even the Waikato River is being polluted to hell with all the runoff from the pine trees and also from the cows. There's been no controls over all of that and we've got the money out of it. Um, already. So that's got to change. We've got to fix it all up and build it. Okay? So um, uh, to Shannon, um, I really can't go in town to see you when I can't know where you are. I'll ring the office, um, uh, uh, Vulcan Chambers, and find where you are because that's not fair. Um, me being left in the dark someone like me with an important position here in this country to build or sack anybody before long. That's mischievous. And I see only mischievous people in running this country. Uh, nothing much else. Okay? Um, so, uh, uh, Kingy, <coughs> I'm just working in with Dick Carlson, my friend, um, from Pakistani before school, high school. Uh, and we're working with you up at Waitangi with your chiefs with these land issues uh, and also political issues and economic issues and um, law issues uh, and also community issues and family issues, especially the family issues that come first. <coughs> so. Um, yes, so that's that's been um, um, a few days down the east coast, um, Kingy, um, and your chiefs that are um, starting to build something and uh, get the community involved and start doing something positive towards looking after their resources. Especially in the sea, especially in the sea, Kingy, especially the fish that's been devastated. There's fishing boats coming right in uh, to Port Awanui, according to the young people there, the indigenous age. Um, um, and they're telling me this. It's the white talk boys and the Wawatai and the, uh, the other ones. Um, that the Japanese fishing boats are coming straight in, close in, to Ranfilly Bank and taking and raping all those fish. So the sooner we get big drones to get out there and um, fast boats to nail them, the drone will, will, will nail them, um, then we can start building them from that marae and from the top of the hill, the main office will be there, the lookout point and the sheriffs. We'll have sheriffs controlling from their kingi and under this flag and the Waitangi Marae King Bench Court Authority, straight to Britain. British, you're liable as well.
well to adhere to this way in our contract. You're liable or you're obligated to protect our financial and investment interests in the whole of the 500 mile zone area around New Zealand. <coughs> you're there for us and we'll invite you in to come in, fly in there to get them, fly in there to the site when we get it all set up and sit down there with us in a meeting with the chiefs there, up in the corporate office and down on the Marae. Right? The Marae is just opposite the block where we're going and it's handy um, <coughs> to keep in touch with us. So that's all I wanted to say there um, uh, was to direct my attention now from the east coast back to Cook Street and recovering of that block. One block is the same as all the rest of the land in this country. There's just one title that's under this flag contract to bring. Okay? That's, that's really what it comes down to. Whose authority, whose jurisdiction, whose constitution, whose um, um, uh, authority uh, to do things on the land and straight to witness. We're talking from that level, not from the Queen's side, from the King's side and the native side, okay? So, um, uh, first of all today, we'll get the hui date sorted. The meeting date will be further than the 12th now. It'll be the following week. Um, it'll be more, more like... 12, uh, it'll be, I better make sure, it'll be more like the 19th of August, 19th of August, because it's not enough time to give the owners um, a chance to get notified that the, of the land owners meeting. I need to get that from the Maori Land Court as well, and Petumutu Mupai Law to get um, uh, any addresses of those landowners. There's a lot of them. Um, there's about 50 on our block, getting the A12 block. The A10 block, there's more than that. Uh, so some of them are uh, passed away. Some of them are not here or anywhere around. They don't um, um, hardly ever go there, only at Christmas time. Uh, so we try and sort that out uh, uh, of a new date now um, before everybody starts turning up on the 12th. But um, we'll get the marae sorted. I haven't got confirmation from Dick of the marae use yet. So until that's been uh, confirmed, then we can't uh, do much yet about then I'll let the Tumutumu Pairo know in Gisborne and also the Maryland Court know the date of our meeting. We've got to make it official uh, on the record uh, for them so that we can move in the block sooner than the 1st of October on the Hiring A12 block because that one runs out on its lease on the 30, uh, 30th of September this year and the Hiring A10 block runs out on the 31st of March 2017. Okay, so that we can take that one over from then. <coughs> okay, so that's all. Um, that part of uh, the Cook Street um, case. Those people are still in trouble. The landowners, they're a third party in a defaulted contract under this flag. They're in a defaulted contract because they cannot come up with a title to back up against the titles I've got here of that land block, the Manukau Land Company put that title together and they failed to put our names, the Lins failed to put our names on that title when we told them to. They just grabbed it off and said we've got no financial interest in our own land and we've 
got an interest, an unregistered interest in it. It's still ours. It's still our land. It's not anybody's land until you take the whole thing out. All this country. It's still the Crown, Queen, Bench is still trying to buy it out. They're trying to settle for less of what it's worth. I said to Kingy, don't touch their claim. It's not worth it. They're, they're screwing you. They're screwing everybody. All those people who have received their contract payout of the Treaty of Waitangi Claims is a scam. It's a sham for corrupted Treaty of Waitangi 1840 document. It has no end date on its contract. That means it's full. It's illegal, unconstitutional, and illegitimate. In other words, it's a scam. So, that's what I'm saying about settling contracts. They've settled a contract, a contract. This is a contract. This flag here is a contract. It is a private contract. It's a commercial trading bank commercial flag of jurisdiction of the sea and of the land and of the air and of the sea. Everything wrapped up straight to Britain. Business power, government. Okay? And military. So, I'm saying the people on Cook Street are in a defaulted contract. They'll get the bill. Personally, that's what Pope Francis said. He destroyed all these trusts and corporations in this country. Now, whether you use those documents or not, that's your business. But if you use them in front of me in this way, that's my business. Because it's illegal in front of me. That's what I'm saying in the court. That's what I'm trying to tell uh, Sharon. Because he's liable too. He's liable because he's caught up taking money out of it with the judge and the police from my fictitious fraud name called John Juan Noah in capital. You see? That's fraud. Straight fraud. They can't say it's not. It's fraud because they're not disclosing everything I want to. They haven't given me full disclosure. They only given me part of a disclosure. When the judge said, I'm granted full disclosure, I want to see the rest of it. That's what I'm waiting patiently for Shannon Withers. <coughs> he shifted from their office. Why, why shift to somewhere else from the office of Vulcan Chambers? What's going on? You see? It's very serious. It's getting serious because I'm starting to identify fraud as our business with this flag. Now, <coughs> they don't have authority that high to Britain anymore because they cut it off. They cut themselves off and their sovereignty to Britain. But they're going through the Queen through America. That's why John Key's hanging around Obama and the TPPA to try and fish that one through like what they did with the Horshaw and Seabed Act. They used the Horshaw and Seabed Act to get their authority. See? They've got no queen. She's gone in the EU Parliament. It's a conflict of interest in Westminster. You see? It's in a mess. They're in a mess there. This is the straightest thing there will ever be in law at the moment. The law is my business. The law is my business. The Rogan judges and the Cosgrove lawyers. That's in my blood. That's our business on these native lands. We have to protect our native lands and know the law. As far as I know, this is the law that I'm talking about in front of everybody. The flag you have, the, the Union Jack flag, was ditched just like that at the whim to try and put a fern flag there, our own fern from our own native land to try and screw this one off. You see how arrogant John Key is and Helen Clark and all the rest of them in their government. They're going to
going to get the bill for that because he's offended us. It has offended King Itodo when he signed the TPPA contract without coming and talking about it first on Titi Marae. Now we've taken the Waitangi Marae. We've already taken the Waitangi Marae on paper. <coughs> we've got that seized on documents. All those documents you see online, on my Facebook, are admissible as evidence in High Court in London and now starting to be used in other courts, Supreme Courts in America, use Facebook. Friends, friends, friends. You see, it's what you say that can be used against you or for your benefit. If you get it wrong, it goes against you because of what you're saying in public. That's what I'm saying in public. Everything on Facebook I say in public is truth, nothing but truth, so help me God, it's real. Okay, it's up to you to say it's not. That's what I'm saying about Cook Street. You landowners in there, you only land occupiers. Right? You don't own the land. You only own a piece of paper, an instrument. Right? I've got instruments to test your instrument, and your people are being ignorant to say nothing. It doesn't work like that. The law says if you don't speak up, we accept your silence as evidence that you are guilty, as we say, you are charged. Right? So that's why you lose the land. You lose, you lose the land because you have nothing to say. You have absolutely nothing to say. Your lawyers can't talk for you because they're liable. The judge can't talk because he's liable. The police can't talk because they're liable. You're all liable because you're on the other side of the Queen's side that's liable too. And the Governor General. You're all liable because you've been doing that all along to us and everybody in the world. You've been screwing everybody in the world. That's why you can't talk. That's why you plead ignorance. <coughs> That's what the Queen does, pleads ignorance and put a law in to make herself immune from prosecution. Well, it doesn't work with this way. No, she can't do it with a king in front of her. That's the only thing that will stop her and Obama from devastating the American people is this flag. So I'm saying to you American people, this flag will save you. Just tell me and I'll be there with it. Okay? Over the top of Obama's head with this flag. So where did you get your authority from? Who, which king? I won't tell you because he can't talk for the king. Only a sovereign can talk for the king. Only a sovereign can talk for the king. Being native sovereign, in my own right with the Maui statue, standing in London, that's my own native royalty, sovereign, okay? And King William IV, and King William III, and King George III, and King Ernest Augustus III. There, four kings in a flag. That's my authority to speak on these lands to anybody who's messing around with the laws, okay? So that's all I want to say with this video. <coughs> so, Kingy, uh, we'll have your hui up north as soon as I tidy this Cook Street up. And then I'm back down on the coast to kick that off before September the 30th when I take over the lease on the 1st of October. Um, could be down there earlier, but uh, I've got a meeting there. And I think it will be on the um, 19th of August. 19th of August or the 20th, Saturday. 19th is a Friday, so I'm going to put it a week ahead now because I need three weeks full for a notice to the landowners. Okay, 21 days notice. And uh, so we'll change the date from the 12th to the 19th now or the 20th, Saturday. The 19th or the 20th or both days. Okay, 19th and the 20th. Okay, we'll see how that Right, so um, I am just want to get on to my, my drone and um, <coughs> I'm going to try and make the make the laptop work on it because my um, skinny phone won't work, the, the 
the guy up the road, I'm going to take it up soon. He said the Skitty phone is a smartphone, but it, it doesn't got the Android or the Wi-Fi to work to make it work. So I have to, in order to fly, it can fly without it, but it's the camera getting the camera to work. You need the camera. You need the uh, camera here. You need uh, the laptop or the mobile phone. Now I'm hoping the laptop or the tablet can make it work. So I'll pick them up shortly and get this fellow to work. <coughs> <coughs> I use the laptop with the Vodafone stick, because Vodafone should work for, on the farm block. I've got to get something that actually works, and, uh, rather than something that don't work. Okay, so that's that's the little toy. Can you use it? Um, haven't gone to the gym yet. I've been missing my gym. <coughs> uh, so I'm feeling all right feeling pretty good with myself. Um, so that's all I want to say for now. We'll catch you later. And uh, to my friend Moira in Rotorua. Um, <coughs> uh, we're getting there slowly. Um, and I want to um, make good of what we're setting up. It's taken a long time. Uh, but anyway, I'll try and get my lawyer, my barrister, online now. Catch you later. Bye. See ya.